Listener, my comedy special on YouTube drops in six days. Sunday, April 23rd at 7 p.m. We have the live party at 6 p.m. with your favorites. We have Bree. We have Mac. We have Elena. We have Shannon Beveridge. We have Georgia Bridgers. Yeah, I'm insanely grateful. Watching it live really helps. And I know this is going to sound maybe like scary for some of you, but it would be super helpful for me. But, you know, I have hundreds of millions of views across all my platforms. Your friends have seen my comedy. Gay or not, they've seen my comedy. They just don't know my special's coming out because it's really hard to promote on these apps. So if you could share it with them and be like, I think you've probably seen this person. She's really funny. I love the special. I would be so grateful. Thank you. And thank you for making this possible. Patrons especially. Thank you so much. Patreon.com slash WHGS for bonus episodes. Up to four bonus episodes a month. Isn't that crazy? And then this week on the pod, fan favorite from our early episodes, Sarah Shower. You can go back and re-listen to that one on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It's not on YouTube. It is on the Patreon. Sarah is so, so funny. She's an incredible storyteller. I mean, you guys know she's just one of the funniest people on the internet. Her story does not disappoint. She talks about having ADD and that kicking in while she's having sex and how it actually led to a very important discovery about her partner. I won't spoil the, the episode, but it's really, really funny. Um, so thanks, guys. Listener, this episode is brought to you by Dipsy. I don't know about you, but to really get me going, I need some, some dirty talk, and there's an app for that. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed just for you. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash gay. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash gay. That's dipsystories.com slash gay. Listener, this episode is brought to you by Helix Sleep. If you've been listening a while, you know I love my Helix mattress. I sleep like a baby, and it's because I took a custom quiz on Helix's website, and they matched me with the perfect mattress. And right now, Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash gay sex. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. I was on a date with this girl and we were at dinner and she's like, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of broke right now. And I was like, I respect the hostel. I'll pay for dinner. Right. We start messing around and I have like really bad ADHD. So I'm very easily distracted in the bedroom. So I was sitting on this girl's face and she has one of those headboards. That's like um, a bookshelf. And I'm like, you are not poor. That's a first edition Lord of the Rings, two towers book. With the white cover, it's worth about $15,000. Are you f***ing serious? Um, all right, cool. Sarah, thank you so much for doing it again. I've been, I've been so... I was, I've got to be honest. I thought I made a really bad impression on you. I was like, she's never coming back. I'm never going to get her on the podcast again. No, no. It's like nearly impossible for me to dislike someone. Oh, good. Thank you so much. <laughs> I miss the story of Ash being stressed about this. No, no, no. Sarah did the podcast like two or three years. Ago. It couldn't have been three because the podcast is not three years old, but like two years ago. Yeah. 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 I like, um, I've, yeah, it's pretty much impossible for me to dislike someone. And I, but I do forget to like talk to people, you know, and I have like 400 unanswered text messages from, just over the years. So I'm just, I'm so sorry if I gave that impression. <laughs> no, not at all. I thought I did something. I'd be happy to, I totally understand. Like, you know, you're busy. You've got a lot of shit going on. Um, you, do you know Brie? Yeah. I, I was just, on her podcast. Oh yeah, we did. Brie. We did a live during, um, the pandemic when we were, everyone was yeah. doing lives and stuff. It was really fun. Oh, that's really Ooh. great. Okay, well, yeah. I don't even need to introduce you guys. And Brie, where oh, are no. you? I'm a big fan. Your background is all different. Oh, now. I'm in. I'm in my little office. I'm an adult now. I have a little office. So you're out of the. You're out of your mom's place. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For context, anyone listening, I was only at my mom's place for about three weeks, and Ash is now never going to let me live this fucking down. <laughs> no, I'm back. Yes, I'm back in my home. I have an office. I'm working on what objects to put behind me. I feel I like that's a big adult it. decision. If you they need to get Legos. I do need Legos. I do yeah. actually need Legos because I actually had no idea the the 
chokehold that Legos had on every niche possible. Like you can find Legos for fucking anything now after seeing Sarah post stuff. It's amazing. Oh, do you do a Lego thing? That's like my main obsession. I have like an entire Lego room that I'm building out. And um, like a lot of my YouTube videos are just about <laughs> Legos at this point. It's really cathartic. I want Lego room money. Where, where, where is Lego room money for me? Come on, Lego room money. I feel like Legos is so relaxing. Like I want to do it Legos. Relaxing. Do you do Legos? Yeah. People say they do Legos. Yeah, you build like sets, but um, yeah, it's like a puzzle, but 3D and it's like creative and just like formulaic in that like there's steps, but you also get to build something cool looking and you don't have to like do it with your own mind. So you could just relax and watch like TV or something. Yeah. What, do you follow the box or do you create your own? I follow the box. If I created my own, it'd look like shit. Um, I agree. But yeah. I, yeah, the only thing that sucks about it is that they are fairly expensive if you do it often. Yeah. Yeah, they're really they're actually quite an expensive toy. I remember cuz I loved Legos as a mm-hmm. kid. I I really enjoyed them. I like the sp- my favorite one were the space Legos. I don't know if you've got a oh, favorite yeah, yeah. genre of Lego. Is it something like a regular like can you trade Legos? Like if you're done a Lego set, will you trade it so that you can go do another Lego set? Is there a Lego community for this? You, yeah, I mean, you could trade sets. It would be really hard to ship it, but I figured, I mean, <laughs> I've bought a worldwide network of Lego traders. <laughs> well, no, Legos are like a really huge deal, but I have a, I don't, my favorite is not the space sets, but I do have a Doctor Who like a TARDIS um, set okay. that's okay. fairly expensive. But um, in my Lego room, I'm building out a full city street. And so um, I'd say I like the boutique hotel, which is probably like every person who's actually into Legos is like, oh, my God, get a grip. But like um, <laughs> not the not the boutique hotel. <laughs> you're like, oh, well, I mean, it's just the, it's the one that's available. It's gorgeous, but it's available everywhere. Like it's not necessarily like a collector one. This is a good reminder that no matter the community the internet will find a way to hate on you for something. In the Lego world, it's boutique hotels. The internet snobbery has to stop. Can we just all get along? <laughs> let let Sarah build the boutique hotel. No, but I love arguing with people about shit that doesn't matter. Like, um, I was like, I tweeted like, they should have like an option on Lego to come up with like custom sets. Like if you open like a beauty salon or like you move or like you renovate your kitchen, you can make like a miniature version of it. And people are like, um, it takes like one to two years to like design a world and then build it out. And then, and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to myself in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Sarah, have you seen this? Have you seen this Havana Hotel? What? General Jim's Havana Co- Cafe Coffee House. This one's pretty nice. <laughs> not, you, <laughs> not you browsing the Lego options right now. I also love that after five years of working at home, I finally got an office and Sarah has a fucking Lego room. Like, I am so behind. She torched <laughs> us. I have a Lego room and this isn't even my bedroom. This is my office. Well, congratulations. Things Living are going very well. I love, I love, I'm going to roast you just the littlest but Sarah. I also love that Sarah hopped on and was like, all the comedians told me not to do open mics. And I was like, ah, five years of my fucking life. <laughs> five years I crawled around those open mics. No, you should. You should skip them if you can. I felt kind of bad. Um, like there was a comedian who was like, I don't know if they were before or after me, but they were talking about like how stand up comedy, like, in the initial phase doesn't pay. And I was like, Oh my God, that is something to worry about. Cause I've been doing like (laughs) YouTube and like social media so long. I was like, Oh, people do this as their job job. Yeah. I mean, it, it actually is kind of a beautiful art form that if you run an independent show, you can actually quite get paid quite early um, Mm -hmm. for doing it. And it is a cheap art form, so it doesn't take a lot to make a production. But when I say get paid, I mean like get, get, the, buy like bare yeah. like minimum wage level kind of thing so but yeah. it's all i think it's great that you're doing it i remember when we first spoke you were talking you were thinking about doing it so it's very yeah. cool that you actually went out and did it it's it's horrible i have like sensory well i mean the only hang-up is that i have like sensory <laughs> issues 
And so, like, I just got, like, I took Ativan, and I just, I was completely fine. Yeah. Yeah. Which one's Ativan? It's, like, the generic, not generic of Xanax. It's similar to Xanax, except oh, okay. it's, you're less likely to be, like, addicted to it. That's what I take when I get on planes, because I always think I'm going to die. So I just, like, you know, pop a yeah. couple of those and sail away. Well, Ativan won't save you if a plane crashes. The I know, but it will kill it, you. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Bree, did you Thank hear you that? Thank you for that. I was finally yeah. feeling a little bit better, you know? I feel like I'll just be I'll just be calmer about it. I don't know. There's something yeah, yeah, there's yeah, something yeah, sure. really like I also like the idea of being the coolest person on the crashing plane that everyone else is freaking out and I'm like, whatever, yeah. guys. Because like, there are definitely gonna be people being like, Well, that lesbian over there seems calm. So. <laughs> Pretty cool. When they write me down in the newspaper article, they're gonna be like, There was one really cool d- on that plane and she was just fucking chilling. <laughs> The but the black box footage literally has <laughs> the pilot being like, "There's this very well dressed lesbian with incredible eyebrows, just totally keeping her cool." And yeah. Anderson Anderson Cooper is like, "That sounds like Brianne Williamson." <laughs> well, maybe the plane is crashing if the pilot keeps going back to look at all the cool passengers, <laughs> you know, to keep his head to feel inspired, keeping tabs, yeah, yeah. making notes for the feature film. Also, if a plane crashes, the safest part is like the back, but you only have like a 10% chance of living. Did you pull that out of your ass or is that, re- is that real? That is, no, that's, that's like real. Like you probably should be in the back, like near the shitters. Oh my God. So literally I'm always at the far back because I'm just like, you know, I don't want to spend $40 to change my seat. So I'm quite literally like sitting on the toilet. Sarah's got a full replica of uh, the cockpit in Lego form in her section <laughs> of the plane that actually is custom built for her. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I've got like um I've got the Hudson and Sully like set up in my <laughs> Lego room. And every Friday night since I don't drink anymore, I just recreate the water landing. <laughs> Since I don't drink anymore, that's the alternative. Like they're like, again. Well, we are not in the apartment. We are having gay sex. We're having gay sex with Sarah Shower. Very frequently re- requested guest. I'm so glad that you're back. Well, thanks for having me back. I might be a little low energy. I took a nap. In the- I'm in Vermont right now. So mm-hmm. I took a nap in the car. I'm on tour. And um, I'm very fortunate. My friend Julia, who's opening for me. Julia Desmond. Um, she she drove so that I could nap. Why did Why did you take a nap in the? Oh, I was so confused. I was like, you have a hotel room. Why did you take a nap in the car? Is that just well? Your... We just got to the hotel room. Oh, okay. we just got here. But I am in Brattleboro, Vermont, and it is just so gay and lovely here. Mm-hmm. It I mean, like there are vegan food everywhere. All uh, gay pride flags everywhere. <laughs> the first sign of gay is vegan food is yeah. available. Yeah, it's just so cute. Um, but anyway, should we do the intro? I don't even feel like doing the intros today, Brie. Really? Oh my gosh, you did nap today. Yeah, I'm like, is it like a song? It's like a no. It's not. I did do a song once, actually. No, we just say our names. Well, ah, whatever. I'll do it. Well, ah, what's up, you little bottoms? Hey, bottoms. I'm Ashley Gavin. I'm a cis gay white woman. She her pronouns. And then, as always, sometimes <laughs> my chancellor of cancellor. Coming forth from the north. Are you are you going down in a play crash? Nah, you're not going down. That's just Bree. That's just Brianne Williamson yeah. going down Ooh. on you. Give it up for Brianne. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I say give it up? Like there's a studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I imagine people like listening on their drive to work, like take their hands off the wheel to clap. A lot of ve- vehicular manslaughter happening because of this. <laughs> this <podcast>. Yeah. <laughs> Can we bring this back somehow to Sarah? Oh, no. Sarah's joke is only on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Mm-hmm. How you feeling, Brie? <laughs> I'm feeling fucking great, Ash. Thanks for having me again. I'm Brianne Williamson. <laughs> My pronouns are she, her. And I'm a lesbian from Canada. Woo. There you go. And Sarah, do you mind introducing yourself to the world? Of the, they already know who you are, but telling people who you are. Um, my name is Sarah Shower. I'm a lesbian who lives in LA, and my pronouns are she, they. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being here. You're, you're such a, you are such a vibe on the internet. <laughs> totally. Like, 
Like everyone is obsessed with you. I love your stuff. You have great content. If you, if for some reason you don't know who Sarah Shower is, go on TikTok, go on Twitter, go on YouTube. She's got podcasts, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to consume there and maybe some stand up comedy coming soon. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Sarah, everyone talks about how funny you are, but I don't think enough people talk about how hot you are. That is so true. Oh my gosh. That is is so true. I know. I was thinking about it before getting on today. Whenever I go on like the hot lesbians like TikToks, it's all the comments are like, you made me realize I'm gay. Like the only person who comments that for me is like men, you know? (laughs) And I'm like, that's a good stand up bit. That is a really good stand up bit. That is. Thank you. Yeah, I I, I I think you're very attractive. I'm not going to get all weird about it, although I frequently do. <laughs> she does. Yeah, okay. Get weird. <laughs> no, I'm good. Wait, Bri, I was going to ask you something. <laughs> do you think my intros are stupid? No, I love them. That's like, it's why I come. I could just dip out right after the intro. I'm on a high after you that. You really could. You were just laughing and I wasn't sure. You know, they're ironically silly. Like, I know how stupid they are. No, I, I'm aware... <laughs> What are you going through right now? What are you going through? I don't know. When, I, when I'm tired, I get insecure. Do you guys get that way? Yeah. When, you're, when you don't have a lot of... You, you do, Sarah? I find when I'm, when I'm tired, I get super anxious and I'm afraid I'm offending everybody. Alex knows about this because he sees me almost every day. So he sees me on my bad days. Alex, you know how insecure I am. Oh, man. <laughs> That's when I really get it. That's when the belt yeah. comes out. Oh, <laughs> No, Ash, I I think you are so funny and Thanks. Thank you. you're so fun to be around and Thanks. I love you so much. Thanks. I appreciate it. Well, how does it come out for you, Sarah? Are you, you, you get anxious, anxious when you're tired? Um, yeah, like I get like slap happy and I, I kind of like already have like a bit of a stutter anyway. So when I get tired, my words don't like come together and I'm like, did that make sense? I have actually the same thing. I have, um, some problems with my speech. I I've never talked about this before on the podcast, but I have, um, I had a speech impediment as a child and I went into, I did speech therapy as a kid and I do have, and my mom has it too. I do have a uh, listener right in I don't want to not use the correct words because I'm not super in the speech impediment community but I definitely like (laughs) Brie sorry what's happening there Brie I don't know just the listeners right in after the speech impediment but it was just it feels like we're about to have a bird watching moment here it It feels like you are about to offend the wrong group of people (laughs) Brie nope I'm zipping it Okay. Well, I mean, if right. you if you had a speech impediment or you have one, I you can talk on like you can make fun of it, you know. Like I make fun of stutters because I've had to, I had to go to speech therapy for one. Oh, okay. I have like a very mm-hmm. mild, mm-hmm. what I would describe as a pretty mild stutter, but I do get the classic like tripping up on one sound and holding it for a while, but not as long as I've seen in media and with interviews with people with stutters. Um, so I don't know. I don't really know. I've never looked into that part of it, but when I get tired, boy, wow. Like I, I, it, it gets really bad. Mm. Well, I'm coming out as having once had a speech impediment as a child to everybody here. <laughs> so brave. I hit the, yes. So brave. I have, uh, <laughs> but I, I thought I'd share this story. It's not exact. I did. I've had gay sex this week. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I thought I would share. <laughs> oh yes. Sarah, the way this works is we go round table. I'm going to share a gay sex story. You're going to share a gay sex story. It doesn't have to be a gay sex story. It can be anything. It can be a bad date. It can be a coming out thing. We can just do Q&A, like whatever. It's very mm-hmm. relaxed. And then Bree's going to share one. And we want you to interrupt us. We're going to interrupt you. Ask any questions, thoughts, concerns, jokes, whatever you got. Super conversational. Does that make sense? Okay. I went really fast. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cool. April 23rd, 7 p.m., YouTube, my comedy special comes out. Go watch my special on April 23rd, 7 p.m. We have the party at 6 p.m. with Brie, Elena, Mac, Hannah, uh, lots of my friends. Watch live. It really, really helps it go viral. And going viral is what your girl needs. Get some friends over. Turn it on every phone. Turn it on every computer. Break into your straight neighbor's house. Ruin their algorithm by watching the special. It's nine years of my my work. 
culminated to this point. If you love this podcast, this honestly, the special is way funnier. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say that. It's just way funnier. It would mean a lot to me if you watched it. It's free. It's on YouTube. You can add it to your calendar by clicking the link down here, or you can go over to my YouTube and turn on your notifications. Do both. Sign up for the text alert. Sign up for my email list. Do all five or six of these things, and you will hear from me every day of your life. <laughs> but thanks, guys. Thank you for your support. It was made possible by our Patreon, patreon.com slash WHGS. But mostly, go head on over to YouTube and turn on your notifications. So my gay sex from this week is just a really crazy thing that happened to me yesterday. But this dude, <laughs> this dude, this is a story about creepy men. Because I don't have a lot of creepy men in my life. You know? Okay. I have not had Must a lot nice. of bad experiences with men. Of course, I've had some. I am a woman. <laughs> but I haven't had a lot. So. Your gay sex is about a creepy man. Okay. Okay. It is. I'll let it I'm, unfold. Stick with me. Stick okay, with I'm me. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. So, the, I get a DM from this guy. And it says, I'm going to the hot tub if you want to come with. So obviously I'm intrigued because I'm <laughs> natural response. Obviously. I'm at home intrigued. I'm alone. I'm like, why the fuck is this guy DMing like internet famous lesbian me about going to the hot tub <laughs> with him? I, I, and I use that term very loosely. Just and by this the is way. someone you don't know. Like this is a complete stranger requests it went into requests. Do you have a where you live is there a hot tub no hot tub <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> that is a great question because <laughs> yeah, i love that he said the hot tub like like he, it sounds like he's referring to a specific hot tub that you're also going to be like know about i love a hot tub okay nothing can keep <laughs> me out of there if there's one <laughs> if there is a the hot tub i am in it so but, you were genuinely curious, like, where's this hot tub at? Because I might, I I might join. Like, well, I don't know who this guy is, but I would love to be in the hot tub. <laughs> okay. um, so I go to his page. He's like a 20-year-old, 20, 20 like, aspiring fitness influencer. He's really jacked. Huh. And he has some, pr- and he's very pale. He's got red hair. <laughs> <laughs> specific because when dimension. when pale people are jacked i i actually it's not the same it's it isn't the same and i i'm no. speaking as a, a somewhat pale person who is in love with a very pale person <laughs> it's just not throw some self tanner on i think i don't know write in if you like a, a, a pale jacked person but it feels like if you're going to be jacked you should throw some self tanner on that's just how i a controversial opinion I'm going to agree with that controversial opinion. Yeah. During like bodybuilding competitions, you like are supposed to tan so you can see the muscles like a lot better. So exactly. they probably should. Tan. Yeah. And we're mm-hmm. body positive here. And those guys have a great track record of making people feel good. It's raw potato versus roasted potato, if you will. So I said to him. Which will looks better. It was the potatoes. I said to oh, him, are you messaging the correct Ashley Gavin? That's what I said back. And he said, shit, I thought I was. I feel so dumb right now. And then he didn't, didn't say anything for a minute. And then okay. he texted me again. I missed my flight. So because he's in the hot tub. Yeah. Because he's in the hot tub. And I said, you're really going through it. And he goes, yeah, my girlfriend broke up with me. A lot going on. What and I said, talking to I said his name's James. I don't give a fuck anymore. His name is James. I go, James, is the you road okay? this lonely, Ash? Like, what is going on out there? <laughs> like, text a friend, buddy. This is this is getting dark. This is this getting was, I was dark. at home. I was at home. And I was just like, I'd had a long day. And I was just like, this is funny. I'm going to keep going. And I said, okay. James, are you okay? Do you need help? Can I help you find the right Ashley Gavin? Because I thought this is content now. <laughs> Now you're on the and then, search. <laughs> and then he goes, and this is where it takes a real turn. There's two major turns in this story. I think I found her, but she told me she's gay. Oh, he's he's saying you. He's already There's, found you. I don't know if he's talking about me, about me or some other gay Ashley Gavin. He's flirting. That's flirting. Yeah. Is it flirting? What do you think, Sarah? I, I th- Maybe, yeah, but he's doing it really bad. Yeah, really bad. 
Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely poor flirting, but I feel like he's hoping that you're going to be like, don't worry. That's all for show, baby. James, where's <laughs> yeah. the tub? I'm coming over. Where's the tub, James? <laughs> so then he goes, she told me she's gay. So I wrote her a poem. She liked it, though. And then I wrote back. That's really funny because I'm also gay. Just like, it's you, James. You're making us gay. Yeah, yeah, but, it's um... you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously, he goes, that's chill. It's all love. Just feeling alone. And I said, well, thank you for your support <laughs> from, on behalf of the gay community. Um, I'm sure you'll meet someone. And then he sends me the profile of the Ashley that he's talking about. So he actually knows oh, there he's was. DM'd. Yes, yes, yes. So she messaged me or she, he messages me her profile. So I was like, this is weird. Something inside of me was just like, this is so weird. So I messaged the girl <laughs> and I'm like. You know, because I was like, oh, is this like an elaborate? She's clearly gay. Is this like an elaborate scheme to get me to DM her? Because that's also hilarious. Like, I didn't mm. know what was happening. So I DM the girl and the girl was like, oh, my God, this guy DM you. He's been stalking me all day. That's not a long time to stalk someone. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's like, relax a bit. It's just been a day, you know. No, but apparently... They met in the morning, and she didn't know this, but he followed her to where she studies and then waited oh. outside of that place all day for her to come out. And then when she came out, he was like, oh, I, I missed my flight and, like, showed her that he had missed her flight. And now he's still trying to, like, hang out with her. Is there I'll a be- hot tub where she studies? Like, what Ivy League school is this? I think it's, like, I don't even know what's happening, but, like... <laughs> The fact that you're now part of this, too, it's so I know, it's to me. so wild. And I'm posting these things on my Instagram. I have his name blacked out and everything like that because I'm, like, just trying to, you know. And she was, like, she said to me, she even said to me, like, ugh, he wrote me this poem and I didn't want to make him feel bad, but obviously it was super weird. And I was, like, yeah. So I suggested, I spoke to her and I suggested back to him, you'll probably feel better if you go home. And then I thought, I'm going to help society. This is where I really lost it, guys. Like, this was so stupid. I was like, I'm going to help society. I'm going to This is where you lost it? This is the, this is, this is the story. Thank you, Brie. Okay. I can't see you, so I'm going to assume you're saying that with a little smile. (laughs) Um, I I was like, I'm going to help society. I am going to speak to this man as one person who loves pussy to another. And I'm going to okay. help him understand how women operate so that he doesn't harass more women. That's what I thought mm-hmm. I was going to do. Uh, so what I okay. said to him was, I understand you're lonely, but women are often scared of men, even though you might not need any harm or not, you're not doing anything wrong. But women will get frightened <laughs> of men they don't know. And they'll even act friendly towards those men to try and keep the situation calm. So if a woman says no to hanging out with you, you probably shouldn't send them a poem. Honestly, maybe cut poems out completely is what I said. (laughs) That's good advice. (laughs) A poem from a man is not what anyone needs. Right. And so I will will actually have another story about that separately. But so I said, if you're feeling down, I would head home, be with your family and friends, leave talking to hot girls out of it for a time when you're not feeling weird and lonely. And then he told, and then he said, bruh, chill out, get out of my DMs. Okay, James, you DM'd me, first of all. Yeah. Get out of my DMs. <laughs> the fact that this is on Ash's day off and we're all wondering why she's tired all the time. <laughs> she's doing full investigative work, giving therapy to this strange man. <laughs> she goes, she liked my poem, head ass. I read it to her in person. I met her in person. She enjoyed my company. And then I was like, okay, well, these men are, you cannot fix them. Yeah. No, you can't. It's like Ubers. Like, I just talked about this on my <laughs> podcast where, like, if someone, if the Uber driver is, like, anti-vax, a Trump supporter, homophobic, I'm like, me too. You know? Never been vaccinated <laughs> in my life. You know, mm-hmm. like, I, I'm nice to guys when I want to be alive longer. You know, so like yes, she, this, exactly. this guy's following her all day, reads a poem. Of course, she's going to be like, I loved it. You know, like you just don't want to be killed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what do we have to do? Like, how can we get this message out to them? 
that if if they don't hang out, like you you don't send a poem. Like how do we yeah. communicate this information? I don't know. Ninety, but Sarah's right. Ninety percent of the time, I'm nice to men. It's it's simply because I don't want to die. Yeah. So you know, it is what it, it is. It just was wild. Mm. You know, a friend of mine, a straight friend of one of my very good friends. In fact, an ex girlfriend of mine who I became friends with. She started dating this guy. She really liked him. And the first night they slept together, he read her a Shakespeare sp- sonnet that he had memorized. And no. yep, exactly. No. Sarah's rolling her no. eyes. I can't see what no. Bree's doing. Bree's saying no, no, no. I'm drier than a desert over here just thinking about it. Yes. I said to her and I was like, I literally was like, and you want to be in a relationship with this guy? That's a red, like you have to get out. You have to get out. <laughs> Your body is going to be across four different states. Like they are going <laughs> to absolutely be, like this is such a red flag. And she. She dated him for four years, and when they finally broke up, he w- he lost it, and he was like traipsing around the apartment with a baseball bat and shit. Like he got near, he nearly got violent. She had to like leave, and and you, she didn't feel safe. So if you, what I'm saying is, listener, if you're straight or you date men, poems a red flag always. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sonnet means stop, get out while you can. No Shakespeare. <laughs> no means no. Sonnet means stop. Yeah. Um. That's my that's just my gay section this week. I just don't understand. I think it's the funniest part about it is that I thought I could help. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's like confronting like an alcoholic or like a narcissist. Like you can't tell them they're a narcissist or an alcoholic. They have to like find it out for themselves. So he'll find out he's a stalker from the judicial system. You know, (laughs) that he he has his own timeline, you know? Yeah. And it'll be another man telling him for sure. That's the only time he might listen. Now, should I should I dox him <laughs> or am I going to get murdered? I would stay out of your DM request by the sounds of it. Yeah, I really got to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Listener, it's spring. It's it's a very fertile time of year. The birds are chirping and the flowers are blooming and, and you're feeling it. You're feeling it. So why not spice things up for yourself, for your me time with Dipsy? If you don't know about Dipsy, Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed just for you. They bring to life scenarios with immersive sound case, soundscapes and realistic characters. Discover hookups about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. It's radically inclusive. That's one of the things I love about Dipsy. And it has stories for straight and queer listeners. And 56% of the stories are voice acted by people of color. You like ER Fightmaster? I know you do. Their voice is on some of these stories. All of your favorite celebrities. And new content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. I love Dipsy. I uh, I checked it out a few years ago before I started this podcast, and I was instantly hooked. It super turns me on. It just, it's just, be- it's better than your traditional means, if you know what I'm saying. It'll really get you going. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash gay. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash gay. That's dipsystories.com slash gay. Listener, you know that I'm a self-care gay queen, and that means I need to get a good night's sleep. And that's why I only sleep on a Helix. If I could pack that thing up and take it on the road with me, I would. I love my Helix mattress, though. Seriously, I've been sleeping on my mattress for almost three years now, and it's the best mattress that I've ever had. I took Helix's quiz. I put in all my info about my lower back pain, about sleeping on my side, and it spat out the perfect mattress for me. Best part yet, your mattress is shipped right to you free of charge, and you don't have to stress about it because there's a 100-night trial, and they've got a 10- to 15-year warranty. So you can try out a Helix, and maybe then, if it's not the perfect Helix for you, you can get another Helix. So don't be scared, little bottom. Go, Go give it a try. Right now, Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash gay sex. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now.
Well, Sarah, did you have gay sex this week? That's mine for this week. Um, I wanted to have gay sex last night with my partner, but I was quite frankly too tired. But today we're going to Target to get like a kiddie pool and some baby oil. And I'm really excited. Why are you getting Wait, a kitty? What? Is that a sex thing that I don't know about? And also you have a partner. I didn't even know about that. So that's great. Congrats. Yeah. Their name is Naomi. And like, um, yeah, we were going to like, I tried to, in- I didn't realize I had a hair appointment yesterday. So like I couldn't run by Target to get one and you can't Instacart a kitty pool. So like <laughs> I have to. And baby oil. <laughs> I, I yeah. really like that you tried. I love that you tried yeah. to find a way to get the inst- the, a delivery of the kitty pool. I know it's just annoying, but like we like massages and stuff, and like um, so that was just like a really fun thing. I found this like game. I so I'm sorry. like in the kiddie pool, like in the yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I have a pretty big office, so I was gonna move the table out of the way, and we're just gonna watch a movie thing. and like wrestle. This whole thing is just an audio book version of Sarah Shower MTV Cribs. Yeah, like first it's mm-hmm. the Lego yeah. room, now it's the kitty pool baby oil room. Kitty, kitty like pool in the office. Yeah. We got it. We got to <laughs> record an episode at your place. Um, do you record your pod at your place? No, we go to Studio Seventy One for that. Um, oh, okay, just because, cool. like, I mean, I do, I do have the space, but I don't want to set up for it every every time. You'd have to move yeah, the yeah, kitty yeah. pool. It's yeah. like, Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the kitty yeah. pool, the baby oil can mess up the mics. Oh, wait, but okay, so I haven't had gay sex this week. I will today. But like, I so do I have to tell a gay sex story from like recently? Because I have a funny one. No, tell the funny one. Okay. So uh, a long time ago, I was on a date with this girl and we were at dinner and she's like, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of broke right now. And I was like, I respect the hostel. I'll pay for dinner. Right. Um, and so we go back to her place. We like drink. This is when I was not sober. We start drinking and then we start messing around and I have like really bad ADHD. So I'm very easily distracted in the bedroom. People take that as an insult, but like, it's like, I, you got to blindfold me or turn the lights off or something like, um, <laughs> and so, so I was sitting on this girl's face and I'm facing her headboard and she has one of those headboards. That's like, um, a bookshelf. And so I was like, her face is down there and I'm looking at all the books she has because like, I want to see if she's like well read and so i was like oh my god <laughs> you're doing investigative work while getting eaten out i was like oh my god and she's like you like it and i was like no oh, yes but like um okay so you know how you said you you know how you said you were poor at dinner and she's like yeah and i was like okay so have you ever seen like antique road show and she's like uh, not really no and i was like the a- fucking love antique road show yeah love it. if you don't know antique road show listener the it's an incredible mm-hmm. show where the most boring people you've ever met in your entire life show up with these insane prized objects that they've inherited or they found in like a dead uncle's attic they have like a tiny mm-hmm. little uh, rocking horse or some sort of chair and they go in and they're like well i thought it might be worth about a thousand dollars and then <laughs> And then they have an expert go, this chair is worth (laughs) $10,000. And then they don't get excited at all. They just go, oh, wow. You know what? I think if you liked Antique Roadshow as a kid, you're a lesbian now. I think there's a direct (laughs) like pipeline. Yeah. The A&E network. Yeah. How it's made, micros, dirty jobs, ice road truckers. That's like lesbian content. Yeah, you're right. So I was like, you've never seen Antique Roadshow. And she's like, no. And I'm like, that's a damn shame because you are not poor. And so I was like, do you see this? Because um, I, I was like, do you see this book right here? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, that's a first edition Lord of the Rings Two Towers book with the white cover. It's worth about $15,000. Are you fucking serious? Why yeah. do you even know that? Because I fucking love Lord of the Rings. Like, that's one of, like, my main obsessions with, like, Legos. And also, I've um, I tried to buy, like, a script. 
wait till you see their Lord of the Rings room and wait till you see. <laughs> no, but I mean, like I so there is this um, there's this tiny bookshelf in L, like not bookshelf bookstore in L.A. where like you can go and like see scripts for movies that, from like the original like production. It's signed by the cast. And they're usually like from like ten thousand to like two hundred thousand dollars, and so wow. they have like a bookshelf that's dedicated to the original Lord of the Rings, the white cover um, books. And so yeah. I know how much it's worth because I've seen it before. And so I dismount, and we spent the entire <laughs> night. <laughs> Did you skip the landing? <laughs> yeah, 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 and we spent the entire rest of the night setting up her eBay account. That is yeah. so cool. Did you ever find out whether or not she sold it? No, we didn't go on another date. <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> I, she's like, what? She, uh, Brienne said, I wonder why. No, that's that is actually <laughs> really funny that the girl would be like, I think I I think I made an investment partner, but maybe yes. not a friend or girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. That's the best head she's ever given. Let me tell yeah, you, seriously, because <laughs> that is 15 grand. Well, your pussy was mm-hmm. fifteen grand. Pussy is what that actually yes. was. That I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. But that is mm-hmm. I crazy. Go on, I'd want. I go on Antique Roadshow and I spread my legs, and they're like, "That's fifteen grand," and I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, thank you so much." Yeah, it's really nice. Easy fifteen. <laughs> You're like, really? My aunt passed this down to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> That is so funny. I, I would really like to know. I don't know if you're on good terms with this person, but I would love to know whether or not <laughs> she sold the book. I would have to go through. I haven't saved anyone's number in a long time, so I'd have to go through and look. Yes. <laughs> you got to you gotta search some keywords like antique. Antique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lord of the Ring. Yes. Um, <laughs> do you know, is that a, is that a frequent thing you do? Not saving the numbers? Uh, yeah, I don't save anyone's numbers. Like I have um, <laughs> but the top like nine are just like non saved numbers. Um, I have my roommate's number saved and I have Naomi's number saved and my manager and that's it. That's really all you need. Let's be honest. I forget to put people's numbers in too, but it is something that I'm working on. I don't know what it is. Sometimes you just get a fuck ton of phone numbers and. It just feels it just feels annoying to do, but I'm now I'm wondering if yeah. this is an ADD thing that you that you since you brought up that you have ADD. I was just thinking it's interesting the idea of ADD during sex making people feel like their partners are not interested. But it actually there's a it is easy to get distracted during sex. Mm-hmm. Not you know I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's my main issue with gay sex. Like the only thing I do miss about straight sex is that it could be quick. Like some, my attention span is so short. Like gay sex takes forever, and I do enjoy that. But I'm also like, can we just fool around a little bit? Because I feel like I'm. We're both supposed to finish, and I'm like, this is just so. I, I feel like there's pressure on my, you know, like on me right now. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to blow up the inflatable pool. You've got to get yeah. the you know, baby oil out. But I think, <laughs> I think no. I think you're right. I think it's totally appropriate and fine to say to someone, "Hey, I just don't really feel like coming this time. I have things that I want to do, and this is going to take too long." Especially lesbian sex, it does take forever. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I'm picturing this conversation having mid sex, just like, yeah. just like straight face. Sorry, I'd really not like to come this time. I actually yeah. have a lot to get to, so if we could make this snappy, that would be great. I've got a boutique hotel in the box, and I just yeah. need to get into the other room and build some Legos. If that's okay with you? No, I think you're yeah. right. I think there is a lot of pressure around lesbian sex, and it takes so damn long. I mean, you're in there for an hour. Of course, you're gonna lose focus at some point. Um, well, that's a hilarious story. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Do you mind if we go to Brie? Brie, did you have gay sex this week? Um, I did. I also, but I want to talk about a couple weeks ago, I went to Vegas and I did a story a while back on this podcast about going to Vegas and I have a new follow up. So I saw you were in Vegas and I was so excited for you because I knew you'd be having some vacation sex. Absolutely. And vacation sex is some of the best. Is that a crossing a line as a friend? You saw my stories. You're like, Bree's getting banged this yeah. weekend. <laughs> Bree's going to pound town. The podcast is called We're Having Gay Sex. And you're like, you're having, I don't want to cross any lines. <laughs> where you gay sex, you know? <laughs> That's Ash's constant dynamic. 
trying to like follow the theme of the podcast that she set up while also respecting everyone's boundaries. It is actually which harder love, than which you I think love. it would be. And it's also, it's funny because like the team, it's so weird that the team hears every detail of my sex life. And then they like, I'm like, trying to maintain a professional relationship with them outside of the con. It's just like the weirdest. <laughs> My life is so fucking weird. Yeah. No. Yeah. I did that. Like um, I did a show in Miami um, and my business, it was the first time meeting my business manager. And um, literally like four days before I was having anal in the shower and I tore my asshole open <laughs> and I didn't realize like, I didn't realize that that's what happened. So I saw blood in the toilet when I went to the bathroom and I was like, oh, did I start my period? So I put a tampon in and then I go, to, I go to Party City and I'm like, oh my God, I got a shit. And before I could even sit on the toilet, I farted blood all over the Party City toilet. And so um, I went to the fucking, and I went to urgent care. I cleaned it up, but I went to urgent care and the guy was like, um, have you been here before? And I was like, I have. Two months earlier, I was there because I broke my nose eating pussy. And then two months prior, I got a UTI so bad that turned into a kidney infection. And so like each time I checked in, it was the same guy. And so um, I was telling the story. We just got a four for one special from Sarah Shower, by the way, on the We're Having Gay Sex podcast. We got the... Wait. wait. Oh, sorry. So um, I was on like really bad antibiotics, you know, like rocking back and forth on the side of a chair. And so like um, it was the Miami <laughs> show and I'd never met my business manager before and I forgot that he was in the audience. And so he was like, after the show, he was like, hey, Sarah. And I was like, oh my God, Travis, you heard all that. And then he's like, just a reminder, we have a meeting tomorrow about potential business <laughs> investments. And I was like, all right. Okay. So yeah. I interrupted you, but no, you didn't at all. That I mean, like, that's the funny thing about like managers and agents and production teams and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like th it's such a weird, it's, it is such a weird dynamic. I know this isn't like really relevant to anyone listening right now, or maybe mm -hmm. it is, but, uh, anyway, Brie, you, you, you're going to pound town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we went to the strip club and we were at the strip club with about 10 other women. Majority are gay queer and i talked last time about how i like to believe that strippers like us when we walk in because they're like oh yay finally queer women like i feel more yes. safe like this is all made up in my mind because i like to like think that they like me back right and Bri, i did some investigative journalism you have an around update. that do you want me to tell you the conclusion that i reached yeah i got a few dms from some strippers and they said now this is a biased sample size because they're in my they're my followers. Okay. But they said that they said that people that the the dancers love queer ladies at the strip. Okay. Club. See, I couldn't tell if it was just like that's part of their job to be really good at acting like they like you and they're actually having a good time. <clears throat> so so that makes me feel a little bit better. But we did go. And, you know, the one thing I will say is queer women bring the cash. You look around to all the men in the strip club. They're just like, I don't know what they're doing. Like, where, where's the bills at? I don't get it. Anyways, so they're having a good time. <laughs> and we are like, OK, let's get the, potentially the gayest thing ever, a couple's lap dance, right? Um, because only <laughs> only lesbians think this is this is like a romantic endeavor while what do in you Vegas. Mean? Bob and Drew? Best buds from high school don't want to get a lap dance together. <laughs> Honestly, maybe they do because they're so fucking cheap. So they're like, then it's 50 50, bro. Like, you know, we'll split it down the middle. But we decide we're going to do a couple's lap dance. My girlfriend's name is Julia. And as we're walking over, as lesbians do, we're, we're conversing a little too much. I mean, we're making a lot of conversation. We're, we're trying to make sure that this is like a safe, comfortable space for everyone involved. <laughs> and to the stripper. Julia's like, to the stripper, of course, yeah. You're like, what's your middle name? Yeah, we think <laughs> we think she's our friend now. So she's like, oh, what was your name? And the stripper goes, what my girlfriend thinks she says is Julia. And my girlfriend goes, oh my God, that's my name too. This is so crazy. And the stripper goes, no, no, Juliet, like Julia with a T. And my girlfriend goes, oh, Julia with a T. She goes, Tulia. She thought her name was Tulia. 
and then proceeded to call her Tulia. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> for, the rest, for the rest of the time, confidently. So then we sit down for our lap dance, and <laughs> Tulia is doing an amazing job. Also, your your girlfriend is so sweet to just be like, that's not a weird name at all. I'm going with Tulia. It. Tulia. Julia with a T. Tulia. Well, I mean, like, when everyone else's name is like Crystal or Beth Ann, like Tulia is not like that much of a leap. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, and we also we're also fairly aware that this is probably just not her name at all. So the funny thing is, is that she's correcting us on her not real name the entire yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyways, her Tulia is doing an amazing job. And we're, we sit down and I guess when you pay for a lap dance in Vegas or at least at this club you get three songs worth. So they will like dance for you for three DJ songs. Okay. So first of all, we sit down and we are like hands off, right? We're sitting there. We're enjoying the show. She's like, you can put your hands on me. We're like, Oh no, no, no. We would not do that unless we specifically asked. <laughs> we were doing, like, this should have been a skit of like lesbian consent spaces. This girl was probably like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? <laughs> like we were overly asking for consent. Brie, are you kidding me? I'm so angry. I'm actually fuming right now. I'm so fucking angry at you. At me? Yes. So yeah, no, I, I eventually touched when she was very, very clearly established that that was OK. But then it was really funny because we we're just kind of like stroking her back and her like butt <laughs> cheeks. Right. Like a cat. Like yeah. A cat. Like, I'm not going to like I'm not going to like hit like I, I don't know this part. I don't even consented of what you enjoy. So I'm just going to I'm just going to or I'm not going to like grab, you know, so I'm just kind of we're just kind of petting. And I was just thinking, <laughs> I don't know the skin care that this person goes through, but the softness of this skin is absolutely incredible. As someone with a lot of ingrown hair issues, I, I don't know how <laughs> she did it. Um. So anyways, we're witnessing this. And then the first song ends and we're both like, thank you so Thank you so much. That was an amazing experience. And Tulia, we will <laughs> Thank see you, you again. Tulia. She's like, oh, no, no, no. You have two more songs. And now it's awkward because we've already started standing up. So we're like, do we sit back? Do we like do we revert back down and try and get back into the stroking? I don't know where we're going with this. And and then um, Tulia's like, well, you know what? If you guys don't want to be dancing anymore, I actually do chakra readings. <laughs> <laughs> And we were like, you know what, Tulia? That sounds fantastic. Thank you. This is you're having a queer experience. Like we are. Is, we're, we're hanging out. It's it was fantastic. She's queer. Tulia's queer. Yeah. Has to be. I I mean, I didn't want to inquire too deeply. At this point, we felt a little too connected. First of all, their name is Tulia, which just feels <laughs> non-binary to me. <laughs> First of all, their name isn't Tulia, but we thought it was. <laughs> so go on. She's reading your chakras. This is a gr- by the way, guys, phenomenal episode. Like this episode has been so funny. Like Sarah, you fucking killed it. Bree, this story is great. Mm-hmm. I'm really having a great time. You're welcome. Hell yeah. I love that. Ash, you know what? I think you give what you need and I need to do it more for you because you give so much great validation. I'm a words of affirmation girl. You are. And I feel like I don't give it to you back enough. And you know what? You've been fucking hilarious this episode, Ash. Thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it just you know natural i just felt like naturally i just wanted to say that mm-hmm. thank you your laughter is enough sarah's just fully pulled out of this conversation by the way <laughs> I'm, I'm like, we're complimenting each other sarah's like i've got legos to do so well i mean physical touch is my love language and i can't really is grab it? both of you right now so yeah yeah you probably liked the petting story then. petting story might have done something I was like, that sounds really yeah. nice. Yeah. Tulia did this other thing. I sorry, I have a, I can't stop thinking about Tulia. Um, where <laughs> she pressed, she got on top, over top of us, like squatting over top, and she pressed with her forearms against my shoulders. So they opened up. She's like a massage therapist. Yeah, I didn't realize that I like sit like this, apparently, because I've yeah. never felt more open to the world afterwards. I was like, Tulia, you know what? Tulia changed my life. How did she get behind you? No, she was on in front of me. Like you got to try this with your partner. So I'm sitting on a couch. Tulia straddles me, is uh-huh. facing me, <laughs> and pushes Tulia's forearms into Bree's shoulders like this back. Okay. Like her forearms are pre- pressing, pressing yeah. against me. And afterwards, I stood up. I was like, 
do I have a new back? And I'm like, all these other idiots are just paying for like an ass grab and I'm getting adjusted. This is amazing. Yeah. By Dr. Tulia. Yeah, the the cheapest, the cheapest massage of my life, honestly. Wait, I want to know what your chakra reading said, Brie. Um, I think a red or something. I don't know what that means. Like, God knows. I mean, I was at a strip club, so I feel like I was probably pretty fired up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah had a strong reaction to that. Are you Googling it? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> my computer won't open any other tabs. It's a piece I'll of Google shit, it. So red chakra. I'm scared. Red and yellow. Y- yellow up above. Chakra. It's going to tell me like I'm a terrible person, isn't it? It says root. Personally, I think I'm more of a throat girl, but. <laughs> Yikes. We knew that. We know that from, from another episode. The base, the spine, rectum, legs, arm, circulatory system. The rectum. I mean, now that hits Physical home. strength, increased heart rate, fear or courage. That feels like, wow, just fear or cor- courage. Not You're in fight or flight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Passion, sex. Ability to focus on physical goals. And yellow is self-worth, intellectual clarity, optimism, hunger, activity, desire to work together as a team. Wow. Well, this was, was that your story, Brie? That was excellent. That was it. I got to go to Las Vegas and find Tulia. You do. You get my chakra reading. Honestly, people are going to, the lesbians are going to start going to that strip club and just like requesting chakra readings. This is going to change Tulia's game. Like people are like three songs. Can I do like one one song chakra reading, <laughs> one song back adjustment, and then on the th- third song I'll slap your ass. <laughs> I actually think you could get lesbians to go to the strip club if it were more inclusive of activities like that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think the strip clubs care about making it more uh, inclusive. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I I hear that, but I wonder so, if we could we could build out our own brand. Yeah, maybe. I want to also add, if you gay people listening to this go to Las Vegas, if you go to the Victoria's Secret in the Las Vegas airport, that the lady who runs the cash register is my old babysitter from when I was a kid. <laughs> so several queer related activities for you in Las Vegas from this episode. <laughs> yeah. Go to the Victoria's Secret in Las Vegas. <laughs> no, it's the Vegas get- airport. The Vegas airport. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. That's nice because it's accessible for everyone. Yeah. Right as you fly in or out. I kind of like peed my pants on the plane one time and I needed to buy new underwear. And so I was like, I just went to the Victoria's Secret and I was like, I know you from somewhere. And then she used to be my babysitter when I lived in Hawaii like 20 years ago. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah. That, but like for a stint, like a short, a short, short term thing. No, she works there for a while. (laughs) Not her job. Victoria's Secret. I meant babysitting you. It felt like it sounds like it might have been a short thing. How long did you live in Hawaii? Um, from 1998 to 2001. Oh, okay. So three years. I was like four to like seven. This is a really funny story. This is what I want to put in my stand up. Okay. So like we moved from Hawaii to California right after 9-11. Um, and so, I mean, like a couple of days after 9-11. So we had to fly. And um, mm, we were moving with my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, and then we had three cats. And so um, I was seven, Jake was nine, Hannah was three. So like three cats, three kids, and we had a shit ton of luggage. And my dad forgot one of the big like suitcases outside of the ter- like outside of the <sighs> airport. And he had to go back to get it. And all of us just got to watch my dad get tackled by like five different guys. (laughs) Oh my God. And so then we couldn't, we, we got like, we had to go to the, like the room for, um, where they hold like people who are bad. Um, fuck. What's that called? (laughs) The bad people room. (laughs) That's another room in Sarah's house. (laughs) (laughs) We missed our flight and we had to like hold onto the cats. So you just heard like, Aww. and like and then like three kids just like sitting and my dad was so pissed um but yeah it sounds like a movie honestly that's really funny a really short movie the security must have been insane after the you know days after 9-11 it was crazy oh, yeah. i don't remember when they started well obviously within a few days um mm-hmm. all right cool well sarah what are you working on what do you want the people to know at home where to find you all of that so you can follow me on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter with Sarah Shower. But um, I have a new podcast with my lesbian friend, Kendall Landreth. Um, it's called the BCC Club. And just so everyone, uh, like, okay, BCC stands for Blind Carbon Coffee. 
everyone everyone thinks it's Such like name. it's like you know big whatever click club or something yeah. but like no it's um <laughs> So it's just blind carbon copy because we talk about the weirdest parts of the internet. And so we're including you on the thread like privately so you can like watch mm. from a distance. Um, but we talk about weird parts on the internet like mommy vloggers, nepotism babies. Um, I don't know what another topic is coming up, but you can find the BCC Club on Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube. So please follow it. Is it out now? Yeah. It's funny. It's really funny. Thank you. Um, so go follow Sarah, go subscribe to her podcast. Listen, you piece of shit. Subscribe to the podcast. Don't just be like, oh, I'll go and listen. Go and subscribe because that really helps yeah. people because it's going to come up in your feed because you're going to forget mm -hmm. about it. You know what else you're going to fucking forget about? My tour dates. So get on my text alert, okay? Or my email alert. I will email you only when I'm in your city, you little piece of shit, okay? And go follow Bree and do the same thing. I can explain podcast. Go on, Bree. <laughs> I also have oh, a text your film. Um, thing. And yeah, because I'm making a film soon. So if you could get on the text list so that, you know, when it's screening in your area, that would be amazing. I won't be singing in it. Don't worry. The thing about creators is that once we leave the internet, you forget about us. Okay. So please engage with us <laughs> off the apps. It's very important for us mm -hmm. and for you if you actually like our work. <laughs> That's true. That's the thing. It, like, people want to see you live. I see you post all the time that people miss your shows because they're not on the text list. Drives me fucking crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Thanks for listening, guys. Patreon.com slash WHGS to support. My special comes out in six days on the 23rd, 7 p.m. on YouTube. I'm very proud of it. It looks really, really good. What I'm nervous about is the reception and it going viral because... Here's the reason I decided not to even pursue going with like Netflix or HBO. I knew that with my history and everything and just luck that there was a very high probability if I put it on one of these platforms, no one would ever see it potentially because it's up really up to them to market it. And I, I want so badly to just be a mainstream comedian uh, and break out. And that's how a lot of men are doing it on YouTube. There are so many YouTube specials with... 10, 15 million views, but they're all men. And I knew it was a risk, but I was like, this is what's going to break me out into the broader mainstream where I can really do some good for the queer community. And that's just what I want to be. I just want to be a comedian, you know? So I was like, you know, very logical decision. I was like, the algorithm's going to push it. This is the way. Kind of feels like I've been building this rocket ship and telling everyone I'm going to go to the moon. And now I've built my rocket ship and I have it aimed at the moon. And I don't know if it's going to get there. And this is the part that I can't control. And if I'm being totally honest, it's uh, some signs are going poorly. I, I can't I can't get my sort of medium form videos on YouTube to go viral. I, I got a content violation for no damn reason on TikTok. I'm scared. I don't know if any of you have done anything where you've like really set a goal very publicly and you don't know if you're going to reach it and you're getting cold feet about it. Maybe it's like marriage. I don't know. Maybe it's having a kid. Honestly, maybe for some of you, it's coming out. Maybe for some of you, it's transitioning. You've told all these people and you're like, I'm scared. I'm sc actually scared to go out into the world and do this. But um, that's where I'm at. That's my gay thought. It's really fucking gay. <laughs> and uh, if you're working on something really hard, I see you. I wish you the best of luck. And now if I'm me talking to me, but also talking to you, you can only control what you can control and you can do your best. And you hope that the gay people watching share it with all their friends, including the straight ones. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much. Thanks for making my special possible, especially my patrons, patreon.com slash WHGS. April 23rd, 7 p.m. 